about is to review the technique for forward prime and backward prime of an IV piggyback. And so I know at this point you already um, feel pretty comfortable about pulling a medication from the Pixis and doing your five rights of medication check um, here in the room, out in the med room, and again, right at the bedside before you're ready to give your medication. So I'm gonna assume that we've already done all of the barcode scanning and checked the um, medication against the five rights. Um, and now I'm just gonna wa walk through the skill of for first, I'm going to use a backward prime method to get my IV piggyback ready to go. So my pump is already running with a primary line and I really don't need to touch that line for several more minutes. Instead, I am going to take my secondary bag and this is a set of brand new secondary tubing. This tubing does have a perforated edge so you can get into it. And you'll remember from your foundation's lab class that you were taught how to backward prime an IV, um, which means use the fluid from the primary IV bag to get the air out of this secondary tubing. And the first step you probably learned is about lowering your primary bag. Depending on the size of this bag, you may choose to only do it halfway, and that's fine. I have to remember that I'm going to try and keep this secondary tubing sterile, which to me means I'm not going to take the cap off of the end. <clears throat> Again, I've already checked to know that this medication is the correct medication at the correct dose for my correct patient, so I'm going to remove the end cap and this is the part I have to be really careful about because I want to make sure and keep my spike sterile. And so I'm going to spike the end of this bag and what I tend to do is roller clamp my tubing down and then I'm going to hang it up top. Now, I'm going to take an alcohol swab, clean off my port, and then finally I'm going to unscrew You'll notice that my pump is still running at the normal rate. So now that my port is connected, I'm going to roller clamp open this line and I'm going to drop this down. And basically my primary bag is filling my secondary tubing. And I am watching the strip chamber. I want it to be about a third to a half full. And once it gets a third to a half full, then I just need to raise this up higher than my primary bag. And now I'm ready to set my pump. And so the way to do that is to push on channel select. And then I'm going to look for the secondary IV button on my pump brain. And then I have to program in the specifics of this medication. So first, I will use um, the keys on the right-hand side to indicate what letter of the alphabet I'm looking at. And then I can page down if my drug isn't on the screen. It's just paging down through the alphabet. So I have ciprofloxacin, and it wants to make sure that I have the right concentration. So my label says it's 200 milligrams per 100 ml. And so that's what I'm going to choose. It's asking me verify that that's correct. And I say yes. And then I check it one more time. It's 200 milligrams in 100 ml. And I hit the next button. The 
library within my pump automatically defaults to a standard time. Um, it wants to infuse this over one hour. And I can look and make sure there's not any other instructions on my bag. And as long as there are instructions for other timing, I'm just going to hit start. The pump tells me to verify that my secondary clamp is open. And so I can do that again. And now I'm watching my drip chamber to make sure that it's dripping. And once I see the drips in the chamber, then I know that my medication is actually infusing. Also, I can look on the marquee on the IV pump, and now it tells me that it's running my 200 milligram secondary of ciprofloxacin, which is what I was going for. So those are the steps in reverse priming or back priming an IV piggyback. Um, I'll tell you that you guys learn this method in foundations, mostly because this is the least likely way you are to lose medication, um, like lose it in the trash can. So this is a way that many new nurses start while they're still trying to get the hang of the hand-eye coordination of raising and lowering um, a secondary IV bag and also adjusting this roller clamp. So this is the easiest way to start to back prime an IV piggyback. And now what I'm going to do is show you the forward priming method. This is really a choice that nurses get to make. They either choose to do back prime or forward prime. Because a lot of the nurses you work with in a clinical setting have more experience, you may see them doing this forward prime method um, because they perceive that it's a little bit faster to get the medications up. Um, the basic idea of forward priming an IV piggyback is that you're using the fluid that's within this secondary bag to prime the tubing. Um, so you can do all of that before you even get it connected to the IV pump um, and program anything in. So again, just as a reminder, I know that you already know how to barcode scan your medications and check your five rights three times. So this skill is really just the hands-on part of forward priming an IV piggyback. So I'm going to start with a new set of secondary tubing. And in each new set of secondary tubing, you get a new blue hanger. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my tubing down. I'm still trying to keep both ends of my secondary tubing sterile when I use the primary, the priming forward technique. I've gone ahead and roller clamped this tubing down, mostly because I don't want to lose any medication out the bottom of the tube. This is probably the most vulnerable time in forward priming that if I don't have my roller clamped down when I start, I will probably lose a lot of my medication at the end of my tubing. And because this piggyback bag only has 100 mLs in it, I don't want to lose very much because I would lose more of the antibiotics I was trying to administer to my patient. So this is sterile. I've pulled off that cap. And the tip of my secondary tubing is also sterile. So I have to watch them really carefully. And once I spike this bag, then I also put my finger through the little open area at the top that turns into my hook. You'll see a lot of nurses go ahead and hook this up. That way they don't have to manipulate it. Um, and now I have my left hand, which is my non-dominant hand, but my left hand is going to control the um, roller clamp. And my right hand is just watching. I've got this dripping over a trash can. Um, before I unroll my roller clamp, I'm going to push on my little drip chamber a couple times. I want to make sure my drip chamber is about a half full. Um, that helps me keep a lot of air bubbles out of my tubing. So now that my drip chamber is about a half full, I'm going to go ahead and roller clamp up which opens this low. And I honestly just let it flow for like two seconds 
until I see air coming or see the liquid coming out the bottom. And if I've done a good job and made sure that my drip chamber was full enough, then there's no way for air bubbles to get in this tubing. So once I get a good steady stream out the bottom of the tubing, then I know that I'm primed. And from this point, all I have to do is set up my pump. So I'm going to go ahead and open an alcohol wipe. I'm going to clean my port. And get this connected. And again, I'm being really careful to make sure all of this is still sterile. Now from a memory standpoint, I have to remember that this clamp got closed when I was doing the primary tube. So I've gone ahead and gotten it open. And now I'm going to hit channel select on my pump. I am going to hit the secondary infusion button that's along the bottom row. And then again, use my alphabet cues on the side. I'm looking for a C. I'm giving ciprofloxacin in and it does come up here on my menu. And then I just have to check my dose. So this is 200 milligrams per 100 ml. And it asks me again to verify that I'm correct. And then one more time. The pump formulary knows how fast we generally give ciprofloxacin and I don't have any other instructions to give over a certain amount of time, so I'm just gonna tell this to start. And now I'm watching my drip chamber to make sure I see it drip. And once I see it drip, then I know that I programmed this correctly. And also my pump tells me that it's giving 200 milligrams of a secondary infusion, and it's ciprofloxacin. So now I can move on to my other tasks of medication administration. In summary, you can choose whether you want to do the back priming method of an IV piggyback or the forward priming method. Um, it really is a skill of what your hands are more comfortable with. Um, and the most important part is that you're not losing too much of the dose of the medication um, that your patient actually needs. So again, most of you were taught the back priming method just because that's the least, least risky. Um, it seems to be easier for new nurses, but you're welcome to try out which method feels comfortable to your hand and eye skills. I hope this helps your skill practice.